Welcome to your Bobby List to the Evening News Update for Thursday, September 24th. Trade unionist Senator Tony Moore gets the support of the Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations on her decision to enter active politics. Last night, political leader of the Barbados Labour Party, Prime Minister Mia Motte, revealed that Moore had been the unanimous choice to replace Glenn Clark, who will step down as Member of Parliament for St. George North on September 30th. Situsab President Edwin O'Neill welcomed Moore's decision, saying it was nothing new to labor well, i think that um tony senator tony moore has continued a tradition that was with us in barbados almost from the start of elected politics um, in being a trade unionist contesting elections and um, sitting in the house of assembly the names of trade unionists who was being um, was being members of the of the elected chamber reads a who's who in the political life. So Grant Lee Adams, so Frank Walcott, Sir Roy Trotman, Bobby Morris, Evelyn Graves, um, Boeing, uh, Mr. Boeing from the NUPW. Um, all of these have been trade unionists who came to national attention as trade unionists before being elected to the House of Assembly. And I have no doubt that if successful, um, Senator Moore will continue to represent the, the interests of, of Labour. Meanwhile, political parties appear unmoved by the announcement that Moore will vie for the St. George North seat on a BLP ticket in the upcoming by-election. Speaking to members of the media this morning, President of the Democratic Labour Party, Vila de Pisa, said she was happy to hear that Moore, the General Secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union, had been chosen. I am not in any way getting concerned in whether or not their process was democratic or not. That is for them to deal with. Uh, that, that is not our concern. I am not either going to get into whether or not she was representing the workers or representing herself or representing the party when she did particular things because the people of St. George North will be the correct ones to prosecute her on that. And um, I, I am also not going to be hypocritical and speak about any marriage between the trade unions and politics when both of the major parties have been beneficiaries of that over time. The constituents of the Barbados Workers Union will know how they feel about it. I am pretty certain that the constituents of the Barbados Workers Union who also reside in St. James North, in, in the beggar pardon, in St. George North will know how to deal with it. We in our strategizing know how we intend to deal with it and all I will say is thanks to the Barbados Labour Party for their announcement last night. Pisa says her party will select a candidate for the by-election after this weekend's annual general conference. Tomorrow starts our annual right. conference. Tomorrow starts our annual conference. So the, we have two things running parallel. Okay? The branch executive met last night. The, it is not that we've rested it down until after annual conference. The two things are running parallel. But for now, facing the media, we are having a conversation about the annual conference. And as I told you, check us Monday. Check us, check us Sunday night, if you like. All right? And we'll be all about how we have come together to face St. George North and to find decent representation for the people in that constitution. Do you have like one or two names? Or one or one we name? do. We have more than one or two names, to be quite frank. Two names. And be, yes, okay. more than one or two names. We had one or two names before the, the by-election was announced, and as I told you, we received more letters since then. Leader of the Opposition People's Party for Democracy, Bishop Joseph Atherley, told Barbados today both the BLP and more were entitled to make their own decision. He says ultimately the people of St. George North would have the final say. I think the Barbados Party is free to make its own choices with reference to who ought to be candidates to represent its interests in any constituency in Barbados using the mechanisms available to it in the party. Yeah? Yeah. I think Tony Moore, as a mature, responsible adult, is free to make her life commitment choices with respect to how she thinks she can best serve the interests of the people.
In other news, Minister of Education, Technological and Vocational Training, Santia Bradshaw, issues a call for the Caribbean Examinations Council to urgently investigate concerns raised over the recently released CAPE and CSEC results. The plea comes on the heels of an online petition which has garnered over 7,500 signatures from students who are demanding a thorough review of the results. Minister Bradshaw strongly urged CXE to move swiftly to investigate the issue given the large number of students who have raised concerns. The disquiet among students who recently received the results of the CXE CAPE and CSEC examinations are definitely cause for concern. I am of the view that an urgent investigation must be carried out by CXE into this matter to preserve the integrity of the examinations. I know that the Council has already responded to indicate the procedure to initiate the review process by Friday the 23rd of October. And while there must be respect for process, I do feel, however, that given the unprecedented number of students who have raised concerns, particularly those online, I would strongly urge CXC to move swiftly to investigate and also to consider the waiver of fees associated with the review. Indeed, these are not normal times, and as a cloud of uncertainty looms over the heads of several of our students who are preparing to go off to university, it is incumbent on CXC to urgently resolve this matter so that they can get on with their life. There's regional and international news after this short break. To news from the region now, St. Vincent and the Grenadines record a spike in dengue cases and two deaths, including that of a nine-year-old student. The country is experiencing its worst outbreak of the mosquito-borne illness with over 300 confirmed cases. Minister of Health Luke Brown says doctors have been working around the clock to treat patients. The Accident and Emergency Department of the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital has seen an increase in the demand for its services as a result of dengue. 50 cases in all showed up at the Accident and Emergency Department in August 2020, and this compares with 167 cases, of which 37 were children and 59 admitted for the month of September so far as at the 20th of this month. Two dengue deaths have been recorded, a middle-aged female and a nine-year-old male. We extend our condolences to the affected families. The distribution of dengue cases was also provided, and we saw that there is greatest prevalence among persons under 25 years old and in the Pembroke, Kingstown and Georgetown Health Districts. On the international front, Republican leader Mitch McConnell says there will be an orderly post-election transition in the U.S. The top U.S. senator said regardless of who wins the November 3rd presidential election, there will be a peaceful inauguration come January 20th, 2021. More from Reuters TV. Republican leaders are pushing back Thursday on President Trump's refusal to commit to a peaceful transfer of power should he lose the November 3rd election. Trump was asked at a news conference at the White House Wednesday. Will you commit here today for a peaceful transferal of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. Get rid of the ballots and you'll have a very, trans we'll have a very peaceful, there won't be a transfer, frankly, there'll be a continuation. The president, who trails Democratic nominee Joe Biden in national opinion polls, has repeatedly cast doubt on the legitimacy of the election, asserting without evidence that mail-in ballots would lead to fraud and a, quote, rigged outcome. Trump calling to, quote, get rid of the ballots and arguing, quote, there won't be a transfer, there will be a continuation, rankled Republican leadership. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell tweeted, quote, 
There will be an orderly transition, just as there has been every four years since 1792. Senator Mitt Romney tweeted, quote, Fundamental to democracy is the peaceful transition of power. Without that, there is Belarus. Senator Marco Rubio, quote, As we have done for over two centuries, we will have a legitimate and fair election. It may take longer than usual to know the outcome, but it will be a valid one. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.